So, what is Google Firestore? Well, Firestore takes the best of data store and Firebase real-time database to create a NoSQL document database that's built for high performance and scaling. The data model in Firestore is pretty simple. Everything is either a collection or a document. A collection holds multiple documents and a document contains your data, which is schemaless. Documents are meant to be lightweight, so you'd need to keep that in mind when designing your applications. Let's look at a real-world use case. So you've come up with this great new idea for a restaurant review app. How would you model it with Firestore? Well first, your app will need to deal with multiple restaurants. Each restaurant will have to deal with its own reviews as well. What would be a good way to structure this data given our use case? First of all, restaurants will need to be a collection of documents. That stuff's pretty straightforward. But each restaurant will have to hold multiple reviews, especially if our app is successful. We can try to save all reviews within the restaurant document, but that would not be a great idea to keep the document lightweight. Why do we want to keep this lightweight? Well, in some cases, we might just want to display the restaurant information to the user. But if we kept the reviews within the same document, we'd be fetching a lot of unnecessary data. So it's a better design choice to keep them separate. But how do we do this? Well, sub-collections to the rescue. Documents can contain collections within them, which are referred to as sub-collections. Keep in mind that a sub-collection is tied directly to a document and is not available as a root collection. This design approach will work well for our restaurant app idea. Before I jump into code, I want to show you some code snippets that will come in real handy. These are some Node.js references. So whenever we want to interact with Google Firestore, we must first create a reference to that particular resource. This is how we create a reference to a collection. And this is to a document within a collection. This is how we deal with sub-collections. And this is how we get references to a document within a sub-collection. Now that we've covered the basics, let's jump into a demo. All right, so let's jump into the Google Cloud Platform. Click on the navigation menu, and you should go to Storage Options and select Firestore. Click on Firestore, and this should bring up and present you with these two options. You want to select native mode as we are not interested in data store right now. Select the location of your choice. At this point, I'm going to select Hong Kong and click Create Database. This should take some time, but once it's done, it should look like this. We're not done yet. We want to create a service account key. So we want to head back home and head over to Project Settings. Once we are in project settings, we want to go under service accounts to be able to create a private key. So click service accounts and select your project. You want to go into edit mode to be able to create keys. So click edit. This should allow you to create a key. Create a JSON key and select create. This should save the file to your disk and we're going to need to use it later in our node server app. All right, so I'm in my Visual Studio editor right now. Let's create a new file and call it firestoreclient.js. I'm going to install the npm package google cloud forward slash firestore. This is the main and official package by Google for node.js servers. Once that's done installing, we can start writing our logic inside this firestoreclient.js. Let's set up a class and we'll export a new instance of this class as we know only one instance is necessary for this test project. In the constructor, I want to set up authentication. So the way this is done is by creating a new instance of Firestore and we pass in an object. In this object, we're going to define the project ID and a key file name. The key file name is going to be the path to wherever you have stored your service account JSON file.
let me copy over the project ID and put it in there. And that's it, we're done with authentication. We can start by creating a new method called save. Now this method takes in a collection and some data. So let's build the reference. The way we do this is by passing in the collection and the document inside the collection. In this case, let's assume that the data contains the document name that we need. Once we build the reference, all we need to do is await the reference.set method by passing in the data. We can do something similar for our sub collections as well. Keep in mind that sub collections are just regular collections with some root collection and root documents. So in this case, we pass in the root collection name, the root document name, and the sub collection name along with the sub collection data. We use the same terminology here to build the reference. And once we're done with building the reference, we just do the same thing as we did with save. There is another more convenient way to save, and this is by using a path. In this case, we simply call the document by passing in the path. This path is essentially a string which contains the reference to the document which you want to access, and everything else simply remains the same. Let's head over back to our index.js and start using our client to give this a try. So let's create some test data here. Remember we said we want to pass in the document name as the doc name here, so let's do that. I'm only going to add a location field for our test data as we don't really care about making things a little too complex here. So let's create a save async method as these are all async calls. And let's run it. Let's see if this worked. Sure enough, it has been created. That was pretty easy and simple. Now we can give sub collections a try. Remember we want to save reviews and reviews will belong inside each restaurant. So in this case, let's set up the call to sub collections and pass in our root collection, which is restaurants and our root document name, which is burgerhut.docname. And inside there, our sub collection is going to be called reviews. Let's create some dummy data for Burger Hut review. Let's add a comment in there. And this is our Burger Hut review. Let's give this a try and see if the sub collection has been created. Yep, there you go. Now the final thing we want to try is by saving by path. So in this case, we'll try out a second review. So our root collection is still going to be restaurants. Our root document name is going to be Burger Hut. And our sub collection name is going to be reviews. We'll also give the sub collections data name, which is going to be the document name, and I'll call it second review. So let's create the second review object here. We need to make sure that the document name we are providing here is the same as the one defined in the path. So let's give this a try as well. And sure enough, there it is. There is one more thing I want to show you guys. How do we retrieve data? So now that we know how to retrieve or rather save by using a path, we can use the path to do the retrieval as well because references to documents work the same way. So we build the reference by specifying the document and passing in the path. So now let's give this a try. Let's pass in the same path and see what we get. Now 
and there you go. But one thing about this is the data that is being passed contains a lot of unnecessary things. We can fix that by calling the data function of the response object. And there you go, that's how you get your clean data out. That's it for this video guys. If you like this video, please click the like button, it really helps this channel grow. If you have any feedback or questions, leave them down below in the comment section. For more content like this, click subscribe.